Hello everybody, welcome to the newly rebranded and repackaged, but yes, essentially yes. the same, the Davis and Jowett podcast with me, Adam Jowett, and... Me, Adam Davies. Hello there. So we've just finished doing the podcast. This is, um, this is going to be weird So everyone, we're going to, um, we're just going to sum up what we've done for you guys. Um, so what do we kick things off with today, Ads? Um, we started off talking about turning 30... Yeah, that's coming up. And um, turning 30 and how that can affect your attitude towards Life. youthful people. Youthful people. And honesty as well. We talked a lot about honesty. Yeah. Um, this is, let, let's just be be clear. This is for anyone who's like clicking on and going, what's this about? Yeah, what are they going to talk about? Yeah, because uh, they do that on Adam Buxton, don't they? So yeah, do but that. we do tell people when we put the synopsis. So we're kind yeah. of, is this right that we're doing this or are we just doing it because other Who people Who knows? Do what it? else did we talk about? We talked about um, turning 30, confrontations. Com- public confrontations. Public confrontations. Yeah. Um, we talked about Harvey Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein, and the old uh, I, sex abuse you know scandal. What? Can you read any of that that I've put on there? Jim Carrey. We talked about Jim Carrey, the new Jim and Andy documentary, and we talked about what the hell does I, that say? I don't know. Uh, we talked about Harvey Weinstein and Louis C.K. We talk about that briefly. I asked Ads a few questions about who he'd invite for dinner, uh, alive or dead. Loads, loads of good stuff. Do you know what? It's just really funny. So just listen to it and you make your own mind up. Also, we answer uh, questions from Twitter, predominantly, if you could sum up your sex life with a movie title, what would it be? Here's the theme tune. Again, aren't we? Just sitting here at my gaff, getting the pod back up and going. And then do we play the do the? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then what do we do then? Rusty. It's yeah, ru- it's, it's rusty. It's a rusty shit. Yeah, uh, I just changed the tire on my car because they got a flat. That's it's very rusty. Right. And that, that was, and this is that, that was, was very rusty. That was rustier. It was flat, wasn't it? It was flat and then rustier. It was flat and then. You don't have to worry about like saying go and that's it. It's not radio. No, it's not. This we, they don't even have to listen to this bit. I can edit it out. You said but have before, a go. Have a you go. You said before about me introducing. Yeah, something. I didn't think you were no. going to do that. Well, I didn't know. That was what, terrible. Yeah. And now it's gone all negative. Oh, it's gone all... Um, it's gone all weird. Tentative, though. hasn't it? Yeah, tentative. Tell you yeah. what. Do don't, we... don't worry. Okay, yeah. No, let's not... Uh... I, know, I know you're probably not worrying. No, I'm, I'm trying not to. I'm I am a bit about, now. I'm worried about you, mate. Yeah, I'm worried that we're not starting off with as big a bang oh. as it deserves because we've not yes. done it for all ages. Right. Okay, so we'll... I feel like, welcome to the <laughs> Davis and Jowett podcast, everyone. It, it's, oh, it's so strange making a podcast. Mm. You think it's like radio. Well, because no one can actually hear us now. Nobody. It's not live. Yeah, it's not. It's not live. But uh, but also that you think, oh, that ran really seamlessly. Mm. That, but actually, Ads did a bit of a setup, I'm and then he and then he paused for about uh, three seconds, uh, and then and then pretended that the track happened. That the track is playing. Yeah. Is if we had a producer here with us, yeah, he'd be able to like, they could just play, it play stuff and we'd come in off the back of that. Put it in Off there. the energy of it. Yeah, but I don't, I and still... Then, but none of that's there. It's just flat. It's just dead. How long have we been making podcasts? Um, this podcast. 2000 and... I want to say... 14? 14. 2004, really? I think so, yeah. So I still don't know how to... Kick uh, things off. Kick... Kick, kick a kick music, in. kick the music in, and then do it like a radio. I don't just have start, to do that. you know, just start. I it. don't even know whether that's possible. What um, Adam Buxton does is he will. I love Adam Buxton. I do. I'm jealous of him. I was I trying to. to I was thinking we could try and do that. Just start it, and then at the end, <laughs> do. Uh, Let's not do that. A separate section, 
for... and put it at the beginning so we do the podcast and then yeah, record yeah. a bit and go okay so we've just done the podcast we talk about this 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 and this here it is and then kick in the music there let's do that then ding 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 rumble chat let's have a but not that obviously but now to, to make this one. make sa- make this make sense for everyone we're gonna have to do that at the end do what at the because end? if we do that now we're just talking now and none of this will get heard um it will though, won't it? Will it? Not only if we decide so. Let's just stick. Let's just keep it simple. So we let's uh, just talk. We've reinvented ourselves, have we? I don't know. I think it's uh, been more of a h- hindrance than a help. It feels like now because yeah. we're kind of going. Do we, do we do something different? Do we? Do we not talk about acting? There's a bit of an allure to do something different, isn't there? To keep it, keep it fresh. Poignant fresh poignant poignant yeah not poignant because we're not that are we mm, not I don't really care about being poignant no um, it's or, nice to change it up and it's nice to branch out so it feels like it's done the opposite though and with that and with that feeling here's the new podcast yeah. kick it in there kick it in there Do music's it. coming in again oh great okay. oh that was yeah. nice brilliant that was Is, another did track we put a different jingle here we'll put a different there we've got loads I've already done there. it there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stopped it and <laughs> finished did. it I did yeah in the future in the future you did that that's how you time you can put works. a bit in here yeah uh, did I? Uh, did he? <laughs> did he not? <laughs> Will I? Maybe we just forgot at the end of the podcast. We forgot and just spent. <laughs> oh, so no. many. Yeah. We try not to do this. We Put try in a not sound to effect here, do it. Don't. Put in a sound effect <laughs> here. I remember a few podcasts where there was that massive silence, and I forgot oh. to take out the silence while you did something. <laughs> yeah, it was that. about five minutes long, and then I thought because I don't yeah. like making mistakes. You know, I'm not very proud of this, but I don't like making mistakes. You, I preach to people to fail, fail, fail. But I, yeah. I do like things to be finessed. You say that a lot to people, don't you? Fail. 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 <laughs> I've been shouting at people in the street. <laughs> no, yeah, the perfectionism isn't good, is it? It's not good. In a sense. It's not good. I'm trying to get that out of me. Give yourself permission <laughs> to fail. I'm trying to get that out of me. I'm trying to get it done down to me. A man it, who's never failed has never achieved anything yeah. worthwhile. I just added an extra word there. As paraphrase of uh, Albert Einstein quote, check it out. That's good, yeah. As with anything on this podcast, nothing is Re- exactly um, accurate. Researched. Yeah, researched. Um, under-researched and under-rehearsed. Yeah, well, with, I mean, that's the way forward, isn't it? Yeah. Also, what did uh, I hear the other day? It was a nice quote. The pain of failing is worse than the pain of never having tried at all. Or the regret of never having tried. I feel like the regret of never having tried is duller. I don't know if it's more painful. Or just as painful. Relatively it might be more painful. It's more of a dull ache, isn't it? Regret. Regret. Mm. Yeah. I I don't think that quote's right, actually. So the dull ache of regret. I get the sentiment of it. Yeah. So the pain of trying and falling on your ass, you think is worse? Oh, well, it hurt that. It would hurt. That would hurt. Physically, it would hurt. Physically, but it you would hurt. You and would there'd be a, an embarrassment, an acute barris- embarrassment. The pride. There. The pride the would be pride. damaged, bruised. Depends what kind of person you are. Yeah, maybe a, a sort of like sadistic. I don't know. Maybe you like it. Fetish. But it, the, the, what I'm saying is that the regret of, ah, oh, I wish I'd have done that. When, when I had, oh, should I done that when I had the chance? Well, maybe you don't. You don't delay. know what that feels like because I you're a, you're a go you're a go get them tiger. tiger. I, d- I am, I guess. I do have regrets. I was talking about this with um, my mum and dad. A great conversation I have with your mum and dad. Um, <laughs> about do you regret anything? Mm. Uh, and I think we got into the talk about mis- the difference between mistakes, making mistakes. Like, I don't regret the mistakes I've made. No. But I do regret things that I consciously did. Do you know? Con- consciously okay. did with the, with the knowledge that it would cause harm. Okay. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think that's or the, good. Or the knowledge that it might cause harm. Yeah. Not fully taken into, into uh, context, the repercussions, maybe. Yeah. But mistakes, making mistakes. You can't regret mistakes. Can you? Um, do you? 
That'd be amazing. It depends, doesn't it? Because the nature, it depends. The different types of mistakes, like you said, if you do something consciously, knowing you're going to hurt somebody, then if you didn't regret that, you'd you know you'd be pretty uh, heartless, wouldn't you? But if you if you go out and try something and it fails terribly, there's no point in regretting that because why would you? Why would yeah exactly? Well, maybe maybe people do. I think people are less willing to take risks nowadays. Do you feel that way? I just said I do. Who's listening? Yeah. <laughs> you do feel less that willing a, sorry, to take yeah, risks. Right. Yeah. No, I don't. That's what I'm saying. Do no, you? I feel that people are. Yeah. No, less I know. Willing. I know. I heard you say that. Yeah. I mean, you personally. <laughs> uh, do I personally? I don't. I don't think so. I take a lot of risks. Yeah. I think risks that I shouldn't take, and then. And then, but the, yeah, but then sometimes I just like to spice things up. Like, what about with work? I mean, with work. With work. I, I think that's what I'm talking about, really. Yeah. I don't know whether I take. I do take a lot of unnecessary risks when, uh, like, my daughter fell in. I told you this the other day, but my daughter, I'll tell the listeners, my daughter fell in the a lake recently. Mm. And that was pretty scary. Um, and that was a risk. Because she's only just two, and I let her walk, I think it was a good four feet away from the edge. Yeah. But she didn't have any restraints on, you know, like a harness. A, a lead. Oh, a harness is uh, yeah. more uh, humane. Yeah, yeah, it's more humane. Uh, a harness to help uh, if she fell over or anything like that, you know. Or I wasn't even holding her hand, you know. But you can't the be base there level. 24-7 holding the hand, I Well, that's a risk. I know it, that. It was, in hindsight, it was a risk, yeah. yeah. But, you know, these but things But at the happen. time, I trusted her. And now I know never to trust her again. <laughs> you trusted... I trusted her not two, to how old is she? be a dick. Three? She's two. Two. Never trust a two-year-old. Never trust a two-year-old, no. To make sensible life choices. Do you, are you finding it easier to be more honest yeah, as you grow older? I think so. Now you're in your twilight years. <sighs> you know, you're some, post I'm on 30. The way out. You are post 30 now. I am, yeah. It's pretty much all downhill from here. I think you've been post 30 for a, since we did this podcast, no? No. 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 You were 29 when we first started, wasn't you? I think yeah. I was 29, yeah. 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 And I'm 29. I'm just about, you're to, about turn to turn 30. 30. I do feel How do you like, feel about that? Um... I haven't really thought about it, Adam, <laughs> uh, to be completely honest. Maybe you should. As you can tell, as I'm rubbing my face now and rubbing closing my, my eyes. Rubbing my sour face. <laughs> I don't, um... Does it worry what you? What does it mean? Why would it worry me? I don't know. Worry some people. Were you worried? No. No, it's just an age, isn't it? It is, yeah. I kind of like it. I love turning 30. Yeah. I feel good about being older. I feel good about having experience and I feel good about people look at you differently I think. Do you think that's true? I think so. I think people trust you more if you're older. I think I trust myself a bit more. Do you? Especially In when it way? comes to acting. Well like I was saying, trusting that you can say no to things without without having to apologise I suppose and knowing that you're making the right decision because it's based on principles. I suppose you, you, yeah, I suppose I've become a bit more principled, but at the same yeah. time recently, I've kind of thought, or oh, maybe I need to revisit that and, and not be too, you know, maybe not have the standards too high because you can actually get a job that you're kind of okay with and then it can always lead on to something else so you never know where a job is going to lead you yeah so you know i had a chat with my agent the other day because i turned a few things down and and she and that was the outcome of that i thought okay maybe i need to just you know back off on the old principles and mellow mm. out a little bit and but you know well to a point you know you yeah know. to a it's point definitely principles. yeah i feel like i'm getting more honest yeah i feel like i I'm calling I'm calling bullshit on a lot of things recently. Yeah. Um I went to went to the farm the other day and uh 
<laughs> with Betsy and Martha and um, uh, we were parking we were going into the car park I didn't know where to go and there was a few stewards and there was one steward uh, and he said uh, and he sort of like pointed like away as in like down the road like yeah. go, down, go down there yeah yeah and I was like oh that's not helpful and then I went a bit further and I sort of stopped because another steward sort of stood in kind of in front of the car so I couldn't in go front of anywhere your car. Yeah. yeah and I was like oh well, and I stopped a bit short of him and I was like well where do I go and he sort of like pointed uh, down to the floor as if to say like here come here oh. as you do to a naughty kid or a dog yeah and I pulled up and I went <laughs> the window down and I went that was a bit aggressive wasn't it and, and then nobody laughed and he went oh yeah actually it was yeah I thought oh that's good we're having an honest exchange oh I see so he didn't you know, get defensive he didn't get defensive dig his, no, dig his hole further. because I wasn't I wasn't aggressive but so I made light of it but I just thought uh, well yeah. you know just to say to him like that was a bit aggressive actually yeah you were being a bit aggressive then yeah I've done that I don't people, people. I don't think people realise sometimes though. It shocks. I think people are shocked when um, I'm getting very good at observing people now because right. they do this for a job. This is my job to observe. Within teaching, well, and, do you know? And, yeah. Well, no. As an actor, it's just well, yeah. your job to observe mannerisms and behaviour, yeah, yeah. idiosyncrasies and tics. And um, I'm just no. I'm getting very good at noticing that. The no. warning signs. The warning signs, yeah. Oh, what do you mean by warning signs? When, well, if someone's got their back up about something or if someone's right. having a shit day. So, or so what do you mean, like the flare a, points? Yeah, like, or if someone's triggers. just being a little bit passive-aggressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and some, sometimes I do panic if maybe I'm picking people up too much on it. But um, I do take a note for myself. Like, oh, that's interesting. Mm. They do that, which is like an antecedent for this you know, oh right you know. okay you mean this is with people you know as well yeah people yeah, that I know yeah. quite yeah. a lot but also just people out in everyday life mm -hmm. do you know how people are customer in customer services and how they uh, how they respond to certain uh, uh, statements or words or um, if I take if if I choose to take longer in taking my card out of my wallet how do they react? Uh, do you right. know what I mean? Like, I just test. You know, I just test a little bit. I had something happen the other day, where I did. It was a bit of a test. One thing that, <laughs> <laughs> one thing that irritates me sometimes is if you go to, say, you go to McDonald's and you walk up and you're about to order something, but you don't know what you want, so you're looking at the menu. Yeah. Right. That. And then to someone <coughs> stood browsing. at the counter and they go, "What can I get you today?" Yeah. And obviously, Subtakes, hurry the fuck up. Yeah, this is a big cue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even if there isn't. Yeah, or even if, yeah. Well, I guess so. maybe yeah. I'm completely misreading the situation, but someone did it to me the other day as well, and I just stood there and I didn't say anything <laughs> 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 because I thought I'm just I'm just reading the menu. <laughs> obviously, I'm just reading the menu. I just got here. And do we have to do this? Oh, I'm just looking. I've, you know, I'm, obviously, I'm looking at the menu. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. do we need to have that exchange unless you just Unless you, leave you that could small just talk. say, yeah, or you know, it could be small talk. In which case, me, oh, yeah, you could just say, "How are you doing today, sir?" Or, "Hi, may I help?" You know, like in a clothes shop, "May I help you choose?" Or, "What do you like? What would you like yeah. today?" May I are help you thinking you? chicken? That depends what I want, really, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Just be an awkward fucker. It does. Uh... I was being an awkward fucker. <laughs> yeah, well, you deliberately. Know, well, that's never nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do that sometimes as well. Yeah. But. Um, I do like I do like to test yeah test reactions yeah I had my first uh, this is this is the age I'm getting to I had my first run in with a group of youths on uh, the top deck of a bus oh, over did the you? weekend yeah, I had a yeah. run in with some outside McDonald's did you day, yeah was a never group... looked them in the eye Adam wow we have a thing uh, Martha and I when we're walking anywhere and there's a gang of youths I, I, oh, just, right. I just put my head down and I say no, this don't is some, look at them uh, this is something don't I instigated oh did you yeah what did you do um, it's not in my nature to do this, but there was yeah, I was on. sat like in the middle of the this bus, and there was an old deer sat next to me, and Wo uh, a woman, an old woman. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, and not that I thought it was a deer. I'm just checking. <laughs> I thought you might have thought a man an was old, a deer. An old deer. <laughs> there was an old deer. <laughs> just to clarify, um, uh, to make matters worse, a group of <laughs> lads, <laughs> a bunch of tigers. They were about <laughs> how old would I say they were? Maybe like year nine. 
year 10 so like 13 yeah like you know just <clears throat> uh, yeah and they got up sat on the front of the bus <laughs> they don't sound remarkably like terrible at this point Ads. no I'm going to say this but there was nine of them and there were oh, in right. there and just then the they, mass just yeah the, um, and they all got sat at the front of the bus and one of them started smoking like, yeah. and uh, all the windows were shut oh. and uh, I just well, well that's antisocial isn't well it? yeah and there was an old dear sat next to me and she looked at me and she was like are they smoking you know like wafting the smoke and I was yeah. like yeah so I went up and there was oh, one lad sat- <laughs> 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 they smoking crack it smells like crap and oh. I went up and where the lad was sitting the window was just behind him and so I pulled it open I went look mate if you're going to smoke at least open the window there's yeah. a, you know there's an old dear sat behind there Yeah. and he didn't say anything <laughs> I went and sat back down and I just thought ugh you know, they're not going to go, oh, this guy's all right. You know, he's just he's just sort of saying, you know, oh, let's yeah, open the he's... window. And you know what? Maybe he's got a point, guys. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's, he's actually got a point. Down. He's actually got a point. There's an old lady sat there. We could have been a bit more mindful and <laughs> actually opened the window. That's right, Samuel. <laughs> In fact, why are we even no, no. smoking? <laughs> <laughs> We're going home, guys. Come on. <laughs> We're past our curfew. <laughs> No, yeah, you know, I didn't. I'm so In fucking. Fact, why are we upstairs? The seats downstairs, man. Just you know what? For my knees. I just had a thought, guys. We can actually wait till we get off the bus. <laughs> I'm going to put this down and save it for later. Thanks, man. Thank you, old dear. Um, <laughs> fucking hell! I don't know why. What possessed me to think that that would be the end of it? Do you know what it is? Just at one point, some days you just want to stand up, yeah, and you just want to do something. You want to say yeah, something. Yeah. But it wasn't even... I wasn't het up or angry, which is probably why I did it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you reach that sort of breaking point and it goes way past any... It's like, if I take any action on this now, it's going to be... It's not going to come out well. You don't and want I'm it not to descend well. into a, a conversation... Uh, not a conversation. Confrontation. A confrontation. Yeah, because I, I get past a certain point where I just kind of shut down. It's like, okay, you just have to wait to mm. simmer down and yeah. then you can talk yeah. but this wasn't like that I just thought do you know what I'll just go and open the window and, f- and just say look mate you know you're going to smoke <laughs> open the window <laughs> he didn't say anything but one of his mates the ringleader yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking turned around started was giving he big? no no he no, was no, probably no. the biggest of the lot yeah, yeah. but you know I could have taken him <laughs> um, <laughs> that didn't enter my mind whatsoever no. <laughs> at any point did I think oh this might kick off and, yeah you know, yeah I just you know and as soon as he turned around for that you know the fucking schoolboy stare that they give you just like and I just thought oh for fuck's sake Angst. I was like yeah and then he's met and then the mate who I'd spoken to turned around started looking and I was like they're what? just I'm looking just, at this point they're just looking but it's it's not uh, doing anything to each other like giggling or laughing at you it's just fun sort of, of um, it's like a gang mentality when they feel even like a, a re- there's a remote chance of any kind of confrontation yeah it's up Pack. to them Boom. it's up to them to demonstrate that i'm not scared and i'm just gonna have this yeah. out yeah, yeah so by turning around and doing that it's trying to stare me out i thought oh fucking hell here we go and i was like what you look why what what is that what you said yeah yeah he's like why, why are you what? staring at me yeah and then one of them mumbled something and i went what uh what do you mean uh what did you say he's like i said you were looking at us that's why i turned around <laughs> And I can't even remember what I said then, but it just sort of fizzled out, and I was I walked past them down the stairs, and, uh, and left pretty, the old woman. And left the old woman. But he, I think he put it out. Deal with it, love. Well, it was enough for him to just sort of, you know, put it out, probably. And then I'm pretty sure one of them called me a pussy as I walked down the stairs. Yeah. Uh, you know, which I kind See, of you thought. you can't win. You can't like, win. What, it's like there's it's nine of say, them. Put your head down. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't just don't bother. Because, and then I just said uh, to the bus driver that there's some lads. Uh, Listen, mate. Listen, Listen mate. mate. I've just tried to. Uh, yeah, mate. Sorry. What's, what's going on? I'm just like. Uh, I've just come from Stockport. I'm just going to see my dad. I'm in oh, a few right, bits. Yeah, hey, listen, mate. Calm down. Calm hey, down. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, all, I'm all right. I'm gonna, cr- I'm gonna cry. But there's um, there's a group of lads upstairs, and one of them was smoking, right? And I've just said, open the window. And one of them fucking called me a pussy on the way down here. Uh, yeah. Just thought, you know, yeah. you should probably know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't tell them I said anything. <laughs> Just uh, don't want them getting hurt more than anything. Right, if mate. it kicks off, and all you, you, you get your, you get yeah, yourself well, off. Yeah, 
All right, bye. Bye, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of them, I thought. Oh. But yeah, I, I'm getting yeah, like that. Sort of I'm getting more of just... Sight. I was walking out of McDonald's with Betsy the other day, and... Um, yes, I take my daughter to McDonald's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking nice, eh? <laughs> Judging me. Um... <laughs> It's all right, because I judge myself. <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> that's what I it think is. That's where that's coming that's from. Where that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's deep. It's deep. It's deeper than you think. That's fine. It's, yeah. I take it. I take it. Um, no wrong with that, mate. Um, anyway, we were on the way out, and there's three. There's, right, there's nothing worse than girls. There's nothing mm. worse than teenage girls. Yeah. They're the worst. My right? mum nearly had a fight with a group a of teenage fight. girls. A fight, yeah. Go God. on. Anyway, but they, they just said something like, oh, st- stop it, Steph, you fucking spacker, or something like that. And yeah. uh, f- first, I mean, what a word to use. What a way. <laughs> and I just said, oh, just oh, what? what's your... Fucking hell. You know, like the Italians. Oh! Hey! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Like, yeah. just watch your language. There's this kids here, yeah. you know, pointing to Betsy. Betsy's like, I don't give a shit. Um... <laughs> Bitch, please <laughs> get over this shit, Dad. Yeah. And uh, and they're like, but then of course you know you've you've looked at the wrong one and said it. Mm. So that person goes, it wouldn't even me. It w-. and then the other one was like, well, what did you say? And you're like, oh, it's already got too far now. Mm. It's already got too far. Yeah. Because I said, you know, to the wrong one, well, you watch your language. And what was what was their reaction? Did they get oh, they aggressive just or on. just? No, they just carried on laughing. Yeah, you know the yeah, yeah. like hyenas. Have you ever thought about saying, uh, "Look, I'm an off-duty police officer," and if you don't, maybe not for swearing, but if you know, you, there's a group of youths. Do you know that being is the scene right there, isn't it? I think my mum has done. Who's that. come out? You go. Uh, listen, right uh, in there, the staff say that this is some sort of youth club that you've set up here. Now, I'm an off-duty police officer and I'm going to warn you, I'm going to take your names and numbers next time I come round here and you're out, you're out here messing around using foul and atrocious language. Some foul fucking language. <laughs> foul, foul, foul language. I'll take your names, I'll take your numbers and I'll make sure your parents know about it. All right? And then they go, oh yeah, shows your badge. Or then a police car yeah. pulls in and they go, I hope this guy's pretending to be an officer. Yeah. Sorry, what's that? No, no, I'm just... No, he's I trying was, to molest I'm us. No, I'm, what, what I was... I was... He's, ah, so he's battering you, us. Shut, put your hand over the mouth. Like, shut, shut up. Shut up. Making shut up. it worse. <laughs> making it worse. Why am I doing that? Excuse me, mate. What's going on here? No, I was <laughs> just saying... I'm trying like, to do to your be... fucking job. <laughs> oh, fuck no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter. Don't let me do it. Betsy. Betsy. Fuck away, Betsy. Daddy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they can quickly like get into a farce just don't yeah. do it. I think being honest is what we're learning here is we're getting older we're being honest but if, why am I trying to sum it up just fucking whatever <laughs> <laughs> what are we my mum had fucking a fucking Dr Phil I can't remember what we were watching but it was me my mum and Ian uh, I think Erin might have been there but it was two girls sat next to my mum and Ian talking the whole way through the film Oh god, I've got out another cinema, story going. Packed yeah, out, and um, they were, you know, they were. Why teenagers. is the cinema a cesspit for this stuff? I d- uh, anyway, go on. Yeah, and packed out. Basically, cinema. when the film had finished, they kind of, I think they'd shushed them a few times, or Ian had said, "Look, can you just keep it down?" Goes fucking just ignored and yeah. like, on the phones, you name it. Completely ruined the film for my mum and Ian. I was like, I didn't know what was going on. Were you in a different part of the cinema? No, no, I was sat because it was On packed the other out. Side. I just everyone was being quiet, like because it was packed out. But yeah, I yeah. think they got the brunt of it because he was sat right next to him. But anyway, at the end, Mum and Ian got up, and these two girls got up, and one of them started saying, uh, "What? Why are you? Uh, why are you giving me shit? Like it wasn't even, it's, you know, some wasn't even those, me. Wh- whatever That's it was, it. whatever what they said, that? and um, can't what the mate that. was just gone. They'd just gone silent and was just giving my mum the death stare." And I saw this happen. My mum was like, "Why are you staring at me?" My mum was like, <laughs> oh, mate. Twi- "More than twice her age." But why are you staring at me? And she's just still giving it about the old death stare. She's like, yeah. "Have you got mental health problems or something?" Wow. She's pulled And then it. She, she just fucking called yeah, her out yeah, completely, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. because she was obviously trying to intimidate her. You know, a grown woman. Yeah. It's like, 
the fuck are you trying to do? This? Yeah. Is that Friends episode? Isn't it where they get bullied? Um, you know, by the guys in the coffee shop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they think they're past it. Yeah. We're past this. We're grown ups. Yeah. We had the same. We were in uh, we were in um, Showcase Cinema in Leeds, uh, on the edge of Leeds near Burstall, and um, went to see that American Made by Tom Cruise. Mm. Now, if you've ever been to Showcase, it's quite a sight because they've what they've done is upgraded all the seats to like big recliner, massive oh, leather nice. seats, right? Yeah, yeah. Loads of leg room. So they've they've cut down on the amount of seats in the cinemas, but they've upgraded on like comfort yes. and luxury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the but outside in the foyer, they've gone like they've got Ben and Jerry's there, like you know. So they've gone full on ice cream parlor. Yeah. Then they've gone full on popcorn, hot dogs. But then they've got like onion rings and nachos and cheese. But then they've got chips and cheese. Nice. You know, you get in the kebab shop and you can get a kebab. Oh. You can get like chick. So, but I've. I've I do believe it's gone a bit too far. Like, if you need to eat chips and cheese and watch films, well, it's, maybe not the it's most. It's a bit too uh, much, and it stinks as well. Do you know what I mean? You that's don't, a don't good need point. That. Anyway, be not quite nice though if you. Uh, but it just attracts like scum, subhuman scum. It was ten to eleven at night when we watched this movie. Hmm. It was a late showing. Yeah. Uh, Who was this? Who was there? Uh, me and my mum and my dad and my gran were off to Vindaloo. <laughs> <laughs> England fans there. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Right, Football yeah. Fans. You, you, your mum and your dad. So we were, I was, I was in the middle of these pack of. <laughs> oh my god! I thought you were going to say something. Oh no! <laughs> no. Move on, move on. No, it's fine. Move on. A pack of lads. <laughs> <laughs> Things are about to get a little bit weird then. Oh, god. <laughs> like, oh. Um, I don't think you're allowed to say stop, that, mate. Just stop this for a second. <laughs> we need to have a chat. <laughs> oh, I on. am none the wiser about their ethnicity. All okay. right? I don't know where their country of origin was. All right. It was yeah. England, okay. obviously. Uh, but anyway, they were uh, they were sat on the left of me. And my my mum was on the right of me and my dad was on the other side. Yeah. Anyway, all the way through the trailers, they were like chucking stuff at each other and shouting and... Yeah. Like really abrasive behaviour, mm-hmm. and oh, okay, it's the trailers. So I don't, I don't really mind. I don't mind people talking through the trailers. I like watching the trailers for one, but it's not like a rule. No, you can, you have no jurisdiction. No, not really. You can't talk. It's, but yeah. because I think it's a little bit longer. The trailers in the showcase. It's about forty minutes instead of the standard thirty. You know the adverts and stuff. And my mum. Forty mom, minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think my mum was getting like really fucking annoyed with them because she was obviously anxious about um, the film starting and them keeping it up so that's, that's yeah, all she yeah. was thinking about <clears throat> yeah so she was getting more and more angry and I was as well getting like annoyed because they were being quite antisocial rather than just you know I'm, I'm all for people having a laugh but it's quite antisocial when you take over the cinema yeah, obnoxious with your behaviour obnoxious oh, yeah yeah bit overtly sort of too much yeah and um, anyway the movie the, the lights went down then the certificate came up for it you know yeah, the yeah. sort of CBBC whatever CBBF whatever that's it is that's right that, yeah yeah the agency that signs it off and uh, and then the uh, Universal logo comes on yeah. and they're still talking right mm-hmm. but five, still all right at this point five though. seconds right technically and my mum <laughs> leans over says will you shut up yeah that that was the first thing she ever said to them yeah that right not giving yourself much room there did not so Oof. all in at this point oh because one of the guys goes you what and my dad like is like Julie oh. leave it right leave it and she's like oh, you know she's muttering away mm-hmm. and then one of them's still looking at my mum so I'm like well I'm just gonna look at, I'm just gonna stare back and then he's like you said you thought that. I thought I'll yeah. just stare back because he's trying to intimidate my mum right? and I'm in yeah. the middle so I'm just like leaning forward looking him in dead in the eye yeah yeah and he's like what mate what are you looking at and I'm like just watch the film please <laughs> you know that type of bit yeah you just watch the film please <laughs> yeah you know that kind of thing but then of course because she'd got their back up all the way not all the way through the movie, but there were times where it was clear they wanted to antagonise. Yeah, they knew they were getting to you. That's it, they were under the skin. You're not First getting five. to me. <laughs> You're not getting to me. He's not getting to me. I know. He's not getting to me. Do you know 
what? We're like 40 minutes in. Should we like tell people what's going on with the podcast and stuff? Yeah. We've got no um, structure about us, have we really? Not really. Because we should have done that at the top. It's just good. I like just getting it all out there. Yeah. Because you know what? It will never be the same ever. If this we podcast. If we don't put a formula on it, it won't be Daddy's Home too. Do you know what I mean? Mm, it'll be like it'll just take Darren its own Aronofsky's shape. podcast. On that, I wanted to call this As It Happens. As It Happens, because it does go so it's as a, it happens. It's a conversation, as it happens, things come up, we talk about That's stuff. It's not bad, that. It's already taken, though. Uh, who by? Um, I think it's Alec Baldwin's podcast. Alec Baldwin's got a podcast? Yeah, it's either that or Here's the Thing. That here's was another time we wanted. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I was quite keen on that one. Davis and Jowett, here's the thing podcast. Or just here's the thing. We we wanted to get rid of podcast, didn't we? We just wanted like a subtitle. Davis and Jowett, here's the thing. Yeah, because you know. podcast is implicit in yeah. the... Yeah, uh, and because you, they, you're clicking on, the, on it. Yeah, they've gone on the podcast. So maybe we could just call it App. just Davis and Jowett. No, Davis and Jowett. So we went for... What, what so else you, did we have? you had... Uh, Davis and Jowett, Black Sheep. Black Sheep, yeah. Which is actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit... Uh, it's a bit... Uh, Ooh, we're not self-righteous. Self-righteous. We're outcasts. We're outcasts. We're like outcasts. Self-deprecating. I'm calling myself an outcast. I don't think we get to call ourselves <laughs> outcasts. Davis and Jowett, comedy genius. <laughs> comedy genius. Yeah, it's the same as doing comedy genius. Yeah. Davis and Jowett, unsung heroes. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, Davis and Jowett's comedy bake off. Comedy bake off, yeah. Because and we would pretend that we were pretend, baking. Yeah, yeah. While we were doing a podcast. Just go, oh, ads. Um, How's don't, the suet? Yeah, you don't want to overbeat that mix egg. there, mate, because you're going to put too much air in it. And you know what happens when you do that? You fuck it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was a. I think that was like a two minute conversation. That was a two minute conversation. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, as it happens, have a bit of it. Have a bit of it. But that was a bit like Peter K. I I felt. Yeah, that's like Abbott. Colloquial. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have a bit of it. Have a bit of it. And I thought then we'd have to start saying it as like a catchphrase. You don't want anything too gimmicky. Don't want a gimmick. That's why I liked growing up. Um, Do you know the picture you took? I just oh, yeah. looked at it and I went, I said to Martha, I said, oh, look at us. We're growing up. Growing up. We've Again, that's a bit. Up. Yeah. Um, yeah that's quite nice I had uh, what else did I have everything and nothing everything and nothing because we talk about everything <clears throat> and also nothing I really. mean the actors the pod- oxymoron yeah you're a moron oh, yeah. the actors podcast we kind of talked about anything anyway didn't we the actors uh, podcast we just talked we did we wanted to I, I, I don't like pigeonholes Mm. You know what I mean? Don't like pigeons. See a pigeon, I'll rip it open. Yeah. And then the pigeon's got nowhere to go. Give it to the pigeons. Go elsewhere. <laughs> go elsewhere. Yeah, live somewhere else. Yeah. I, I don't like pigeon holes. So uh, yeah. I think just the Davis and Jowett podcast. So we also had Davis and Jowett's Comedy Soup. Comedy Soup. Yeah. yeah. Because it is soupy, what yeah. we do. Davis and Jowett's Comedy Soup Kitchen. Comedy, yeah. Davis and Jowett's yeah. Comedy Pot Noodle. <laughs> Davis and Jowett's comedy microwave meal. Yeah. Davis and Jowett's hot comedy broth. Davis and Jowett's comedy vasectomy. <laughs> Davis and Jowett's seaside comedy resort. <laughs> oh. Off roading with Davis and Jowett. The sat nav is off. That's a Stuart Lee thing, though. He says that Does on he? his comedy vehicle. He says, "Well, to Stuart Lee's comedy vehicle, the sat nav is off." <laughs> um, mouth talkers don't like that. Mouth talkers. Yeah. So we just settled on uh, simplicity. The, uh, simpli- yeah, not the most uninspiring and unimaginative podcast title. No. We just wanted to go with Davis and Jarrett podcast. Yeah, nothing because wrong with that. Because we're trying to set ourselves up as, uh, <laughs> as household names. <laughs> that in itself could be seen as quite self-aggrandizing, yeah, but hey-ho. We're glad you're all listening. Um, people are still tuning in. And... Are we keeping this one really short? Mm, oh, I don't know. What else have we got to talk about? Well, I thought we'd answer Ridgeway's question at the end. Adam Ridgeway. Well, I've been working on a script today and I was... Uh, Go on. Because the my guy I'm working with, I've not met him, but we're supposed to be best mates in, in, the, in the show. And so I've emailed him with like a bit of a backstory. What's the show? Just, it's Corrie. 
Okay, you're trying to sidestep saying well, Coronation yeah, Street. Well, yeah, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm in well, I don't be a Coronation dick. Street. You've got Coronation Street. Yeah. It's yeah, great. It's good, isn't it? I'm yeah. happy for you. I'm, uh, <laughs> you don't sound it. You sound angry. <laughs> um, but oh, yeah, I man. mean, because we're supposed to be good mates in this, I wanted to sort of start a bit of a back and forth and yeah. say like so what are we doing here how you know because the two in place the two posh boys from london so it's like right why are they at weatherfield and why what are they doing how long have they known each other blah blah blah, blah is blah. he a new character as well I, I don't know i think he might have a bit more than me but we've just got a few scenes together right yeah. so anyway i started asking questions and i thought i'd ask you some of the some of the questions all right, go on then. So, Are this stuff um, I can answer. Of course, it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, if you were going to invite somebody to dinner, dead or alive, who would it be? Let's say three people. Invite people to dinner. They'd have to be good house guests, wouldn't they? Yeah. Uh, they'd have to be a good chef, dead or alive. Yeah. Well, oh, that leaves it really open. Hmm. Well, you won't want anyone who's going to like a chef. They well, don't have that, to cook that's what for that, you. Yeah. Well, they might give you tips. On what? On the food. The food's cooked. The food's like it's what being made. It? I don't know. What Doesn't do you matter. want it to be? Italian's easy. I wouldn't want any pressure. If I'm well, you don't have to cook it. Is what I'm saying. I don't have to cook it. So I can pick a chef. Again, if you pick a chef, the food's already made. So okay. picking a chef it will just be. Don't pick a chef because you need someone to cook the food. I'm saying no. the food's already going to be made. Because I made it. No. Because. You, say you're in a restaurant. Let's say you're in your favourite restaurant. All right, okay. Um, so that's all taken care Ooh, of. Favourite restaurant? What would that be? No, I'm not. I'm not asking what your favourite restaurant is. I'm asking what the three people you would invite there. Who would they be? So any restaurant. Any doesn't matter where the restaurant is. Just at a table. Yeah, sure. But there's no catch. There's no. All right. No, okay. no. Um, <laughs> James Gandolfini. Nice. Yeah, because I'd want him to pretend to be Tony Soprano. At the table. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So three people. I would have Marlon Brando pretending to be the Godfather. Okay. And I'd have Tony Soprano as... Uh, uh, James Gandolfini as Tony Soprano. Nice. And then I'd have someone like... Uh, oh, God, who could I have? Gary Another, Wilmot. Um, maybe Gary Oldman as... Um, as the uh, Drexel, as Dr- Drexel from Leon. No, um, no, that's no, no, the, uh, the drug dealer from uh, uh, True, True Romance. Romance. That's Drexel. That's Drexel. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good one. That would not be a relaxing experience. I it wouldn't, think. but it'd be exciting, wouldn't it? Do I have to get involved? Well, they're your guests, so I suppose a certain amount make of them responsibility lies that on your I'm shoulders. like really important. I suppose. I mean, you know, the, the fantasy stops and ends wherever you want it to. So if well, you then I am. Complete... I'm important, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, but oh, but that's not very imaginative, is it? Well, that's more role play. I suppose it is. Because then we what could drop you want... it. You what... know what I mean? And then I could go. Oh, actually, let's drop it, guys. Let's, I'm bored of this. Let's now. drop the rules. I'm bored of this now. Yeah. Gary, just be you. Gary, what? you're Come enough. On. You don't have to do the silly voice. James, you're a great actor. You've done plenty of other roles. Yeah. Marlon Brando. You, you know, the same. <laughs> <laughs> same in everything. I mean, it's up and down. It's, it's fine. Sort of been ups and downs, but, you know, this is life. Oh, man. I mean, that... What about Charlie Manson? He just died. He'd be a good one. Did oh, he just died? Yeah, he? yeah. Charlie Manson, Jesus, and... Uh, and... Um, oh, God. Uh, Dr. Phil. <laughs> oh, and what meal would you have? Oh, God. It'd have to be... Uh, we'd have to be some bread and some wine, obviously, for Jesus. Uh, cheese, maybe. maybe. a nice ciabatta. Yeah. Um, some rolls. Some cheese, yeah? Yeah, Not yeah. He's yeah. fond of cheese. Uh, Charlie Manson, obviously, some meat... Uh, yeah. bloody meat <laughs> and Dr Phil good I don't know I reckon he would like a few donuts for dessert he's, when he I, strikes me as a you know when sweet people tooth. say names and you think of someone completely different when I hear the name Dr Phil oh, I yeah. think of the dad from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air <laughs> oh yeah Uncle Phil that's Uncle Phil yeah Uncle Phil off. yeah that would be a good one yeah who would you have 
Um, well, you know, there's like the obvious stock answer would be like Bill Hicks, uh, Jeff Buckley, Jim Morrison, but I don't. I mean, oh, I like it's a bit the, boring. It is though, boring, though, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, I like the doors. It's exciting. I liked the doors when I was like sixteen and eight. Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't want to meet him, really, would you? I bet he'd be. A you should never meet your hero, should you? It'd be a disappointment. Ooh, who said that the other day? Because they met someone. Uh, Robin Williams, maybe. Oh, Robin Williams would be great. Yeah, it'd be great. Do you know what? We haven't even touched on the Weinstein stuff, have we? Yet. Was that on your list? No. No. Oh, should we do? Should we touch it? It's not a pun. What is it to say? That it's bad. <laughs> Just to put our stamp on the whole Weinstein thing. The stamp um, of disapproval. We're proper against it. We think he's an evil, evil idiot. And all of the people that do all that unconsensually... Uh, it's wrong, just, isn't it? It's just wrong. Do you know what? That is wrong. That is... You're a bad one. What is there to say, man? I don't... Anything more than well, what's been already said? Louis C.K. was horrible. That... When I woke up that morning... Didn't like hearing that. I mean, not, not, I don't like... Me saying, I don't like hearing any of it, but... Louis C.K. Just like Louis C.K. That was it. That's all I saw on my phone. It ruined my day. Yeah, it ruined my day. I'm a big day. believer that you need to be careful about what you do in the first part of your day because it does um, bleed into the rest of the day it does sour the rest of the day yeah if you if you get bad news in the morning or something happens it's, to you in the morning like, it's hard to claw it back it really is it, and yeah. that news like I read the article and uh, I really like Louis C.K. I, uh, <clears throat> I do I, well, I suppose I, my... look, I, look, I looked up I guess I still do look up to him in many ways just not in his uh, in those no. ways no it's, it's very confusing to have those feelings about somebody you know Louis CK could do no wrong in my eyes and he was so inspirational and really worked off his own steam and was really you know like a pioneer in a lot of ways and the things he was doing and now it's just like he's he's nothing he's just he's none of that he's not is he he's a shadow he's... of his former self in my eyes it's yeah. like you know how do you you don't come back from that or do you well, well you do gonna, we but you'll always you'll always have that hanging there won't you it's like the Michael That's Richards thing you know Michael Richards who was in Seinfeld well, he did played the Kramer thing, right? he, he blew up at a crowd when he was doing a stand up gig and started shouting the N word yeah. at them as part of a maybe he was trying to get shot claps or something like that but he really misjudged it yeah. and the and more and then he, and then he really pound. misjudged it he went further and further with it and that ruined it was him, massive it? and it completely ruined him um, he even needed like Jerry Springer is it <clears throat> yeah no Jerry Seinfeld Jerry Seinfeld Jerry on the David Letterman show I think it was David Letterman yeah to come out and, and do he, things for him he right? came on a video feed Michael Richards and just apologised obviously as you would and, David uh, Letterman another one who's not um, uh, adverse to big personal um, revelations as well you know with his cheating on his wife and stuff oh, and right. being held to blackmail and... well I mean where do you draw the line I suppose because you know, every I'm not. I'm talking about pe being unfaithful. So let's take that for an example. So when celebrities are unfaithful to their partners, well, it's just a thing, isn't it? It doesn't. I mean, where do you draw? It's upsetting, I guess, for I the suppose it's immediate upsetting. people involved. Um, I it think doesn't... one th one thing that gets my goat is when people say, "Oh, I don't like him anymore. He cheated on his wife." And like, my mum does that. There are lots of people. You know, people are people to an extent. Everybody, yeah. everybody lies. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. People are unfaithful at times. People make really shit bad decisions that they regret for the rest of their lives. Yeah. That's a given. Yeah. So I don't. You know, it seems a little unfair to, because you don't actually know them and you don't know what context it's in. You yeah. don't know how bad the relationship's been. Um. But what's that's the, one thing, you yeah, know, okay. that, and then you know we start getting into all you know celebrities that are abusive and all that kind of stuff. I think that is just there is no excuse for that, and there's certainly no way in my mind that they should be held in any kind of reverie. It's another, it's another kind of malignance, isn't it? Because they have so it's much, another level of malignance. Yeah, because they have so much influence, and yeah. people do look up to them, and when they are deemed to be 
getting away with that sort of thing in terms of they still have careers and they're still making money yeah. and they're still in that position of power yeah. what does that say about the industry and what does it say about people's attitudes towards the industry so I think although a lot of the stuff which is happening now is horrible and um, you know leaves a really sour taste in the mouth I think ultimately it's going to change a lot of people's attitude and I hope it does bleed into you know politics well politics also but also when you know so Johnny Depp for example was on the yeah. Graham Norton show the week after Graham Norton had just been you know talking about Harvey Weinstein and how disgusting it all was and then the week later Johnny Depp is on the show mm. who was the year before had you know al uh, problems with alcohol and was abusive towards his wife physically yeah. abusive towards yeah. his wife so I hope it cleans up a lot of double standards but uh, I mean Affleck's another one isn't he Ben Affleck is I think there's footage of him groping women and he's fucking leading the project of Justice League and it's I think if it makes money it makes sense doesn't it to a lot of people and that's what you've got to change mm. you've got to change that um, and I think it culturally there is going to there is a there's a pattern of paradigm now there's a new paradigm where there's a cultural shift and people aren't going to stand for it anymore no. and there's going to be areas and uh, you know um, things I don't know what you call them like grey areas no no I'm just thinking like things set up in companies that help people have a voice if something like that happens they can go like and feel safe unions, and heard yeah. unions or yeah. you know just like response teams or yeah. you know like they have the whistleblower <laughs> Um, uh, thing that they always make you sign now when you do a job when you go for a job they always have the whistleblower oh so it's your responsibility in other words yeah, to stuff speak like up that. something happens yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Um, where people feel safe I guess to make an anonymous uh, yeah uh, report report or on someone you know um, and I think that's I think the more that this comes out the better Hope, you know hopefully yeah. hopefully the better it is that people you're never gonna it's never gonna go obviously it's been there since the beginning of time how we treat each other we we just treat each other badly as well as we treat each other well we always <laughs> treat each other badly you need the, you don't need it but I mean it's there <laughs> yeah, it like the, yin, the there, yin and yang is there isn't and it's it? not and I mean this has been going especially with acting this you know dates back a long way you know it's not it's not the first time this has happened and you know I'm sure it won't be the last time but like you say I hope for this will at least give way to yeah. some kind of movement against it and strength in numbers that people don't feel ashamed or frightened to speak up hopefully it's uh, it doesn't hit anybody up. harder than the uh, the people the victims yeah. um, but you know um, I think the Louis CK one just hit me pretty hard I just didn't see it come in I no thought. you don't do you? Well, I suppose <laughs> well, you, you never, never do, do but I mean the Kevin Spacey there's rumbles of it yeah you heard a lot of rumours quite a lot on the grapevine because I think he came over this way and did the old Vic and yeah. there was things going round about that it's almost and, worse isn't it if you if you if someone says that about somebody and you go oh well yeah I suppose yeah. isn't that worse that, yeah. <laughs> you know generally speaking they, was, they kind of seemed that way inclined anyway yeah so how what does it take you know what they do have to be careful of though is a, is a witch hunt and uh, the fabrication the, of fake news because Twitter I love Twitter but it's such a fucking torrent of shit sometimes as well like you because I go for my information quicker through Twitter basically mm. by, you know keywords and then like I type in Kevin Spacey and then there's these people or news outlets for a start like the the lower news outlets like the Hollywood Reporter or you know like um, there's another big one in, in the States and um, given a list of people that have been accused Mm. But not saying that, like the accused, saying, here's all the people in 2017 who have abused women. And then it gives you a massive list and you read it and you're going, oh, God, I didn't know that person did it. Like, um, uh, Je what's he called? Jeffrey Tambor. Right. Um, I think he, some anonymously, some something, has, someone has said something, but no details have been released. Yeah, yeah. Right? And about, his, from, from his assistant or something. And he's had to come out and... And these, these are alleged, mm -hmm. right? Alleged until it's proven, I guess. <coughs> and he's had to come out and make, release a statement. And now he finds himself on that list mm -hmm. of, along with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. The same list. Um, it's cutthroat, isn't it? And maybe it? he is, I don't know. But to, to say that before you even know, yeah. like that could ruin someone's career. And yeah. when it becomes a witch hunt, that's where you've got to be, that's where we've got to be careful. Because you, you know, 
with that you have you know when everything is so heightened and everybody is you know well everybody is aware of it so aware of it that all it mm-hmm. takes is for one person to make a false accusation and there's that cutthroat it could be the end of someone's career so yeah there is that grey area as well but uh, ultimately you just hope that awareness has been heightened and it'll push things to a more humanist environment where yeah. people don't have to worry about that kind of shit yeah. going to work it's yeah what other anyway, questions have you got for me other questions um, shoot what's your favourite movie oh Fight Club Fight Club it's too really? easy yeah it's too easy still Fight Club what was the first record you ever although uh, oh god first first record yeah first probably, CD uh, CD yeah tape tape count yeah whatever I think it was Elvis was it and like an Elvis tape yeah. yeah with like jailhouse rock and things like that mine was uh, I like tell people off. mine was uh, Grandmaster Flash White Lines Don't Do It but it wasn't it It, it was on a compilation ah. and I bought the compilation for that the first single I bought was uh, Spice Girls <coughs> Wanna Be no yes mm, yeah well if we're getting on singles and things I think I bought the, here's a list of singles I bought Gareth Gates on Chain Melody Nice. I bought that. Uh, I bought Darius Dinesh, Colorblind. Yes, mate. Uh, what else did I buy? I bought Boy Zone's album with um, what, what's it? Oh God, uh, what's the bloody song? Picture of you, the one that was on the Mr. Bean film. Maybe. Oh, I can't remember. It no was a peach what, cover. No matter what. No matter what. That was the one. Yeah. So I bought that one. I'll be everyone <laughs> you need. I think I bought uh, Avril Lavigne. Complicated. Complicated. Great song. Maybe Busted, I bought. Busted? This was before my enlightenment period. Yes. Where I my had the same f- walking period. home with my mate from high school, he, he, he would say to me, uh, check out Black Sabbath. And I'd be like, who's Black Sabbath? And then he'd give me like a contextual history lesson about Black Sabbath. And then I'd go with all this context and listen to like NIB and Iron Man um, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And, and then uh, to Led Zeppelin. Four Pigs. Led Zepp, and then the Led Zeppelin was obviously there. Guns N' Roses was a big one. Yeah, and you grew um, your hair. You I grew my hair. Head. I'm growing my hair now, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's getting longer. It yeah. is. Well, we're all. It's happening to everyone. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's a common occurrence. It's a universal truth. Um, to most people, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get it cut. I did grow it for for a role. I did grow it for Kane. I oh, played I Kane recently in my for Origins. For Origins, I've never played theater. it before. My first time I played it. Oh, the opposite ever. role to what you usually play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Henry played uh, Abel, uh, which he played in Edinburgh. Um, so we, you know, we uh, we switched it around. So I grew my hair a little bit because I, I thought um, no such thing as uh, scissors or razor blades in the biblical no, this times, is true. Is there. So going back to the so yeah, I had a similar period of loving proper cheesy pop like another level. Oh yeah, Backstreet Boys. Yeah, Backstreet's back. Um, I made a playlist recently. It was just nineties pop, all out nineties. O Town. O Town. That was on there. Yeah. Bewitched. Bewitched. Yeah. Yeah. Remember whatever them? happened to Bewitched? Hanson. They were on there. Hanson. Bop. Yeah. And then um, went to college and uh, never spoke of that to anyone ever again. No, there's a there's a period <laughs> of embarrassment, right? Yeah, I've come of, for uh, I've come, you know I've come to denial. Terms because yeah, you start listening to uh, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, however, uh, he has not been on television much lately. He's been, I guess, busy doing other things. Nonetheless, I'm glad that he has agreed to be with us here this morning. Please welcome Mr. Andy Kaufman. I'd just like to, before I begin, um, I would like to just say thank you very much to David Letterman and the producers of this show and the people that run this show for having me as a guest and it's a very pleasure to come on the show and be here. Uh, I'd like to talk about my marriage. What did you think of, we talked about this a little bit the other day but not much, what did you think about Jim and Andy, the Great Beyond Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. Because when you, when you said there, like, you find him a bit like pretentious and stuff I did find myself watching that judging 
Jim Carrey. Yeah. So this is a new documentary out on Netflix. It's about the making of Man on the Moon, where Jim Carrey played Andy Kaufman, the late Andy Kaufman, who's a very out there comedian. He's really and held in high regard. Held in he? high regard would Alt comedy. basically he would be the butt of his own jokes, and he would play. He was basically yeah. a prankster. He would go to great lengths to make himself the butt of the joke to the point where the audiences weren't even sure if he was joking or not mm. there's one thing that he does he comes on the david letterman show and plays you know he's, he's a great actor like as a comedian he's brilliant because yeah. he plays you know, he's really somber and morose and he's talking about his wife how his wife's left him and then he gets up and he starts to do his stand-up show and he's saying like um i don't have any material uh, <laughs> this evening and you know i can see some of you laughing but i really appreciate it if you just let me he so, inhabits and then he, the character. Yeah, and then he, he gets up and yeah. he and then he says, "I just asked for some money, you know, of some." Of, so and he gets up and he starts walking into the audience. So he's really like, um, very edgy, very different type of comedian who gets right into his characters. So yeah. Jim Carrey played him, and the Jim and Andy documentary is all about the documentary yeah. uh, of how it was made and Jim Carrey being in character as Andy Kaufman. But before this, they start to draw... I mean, the documentary is a lot about parallels, building parallels between Andy Kaufman and Jim Carrey. Because it goes back into Jim Carrey's history, his mm. his upbringing and his stand-up comedy. And it sort of shows that in reference to Andy Kaufman's stuff. Yeah. I didn't really... It didn't really sit well with me, this sort of... I don't know, trying to make... I never, I've never seen any of Jim Carrey's stand up so I can't really comment but I will <laughs> he's more of a he, he started off as an impressionist didn't he he did but I think they were trying to make this parallel between this I don't give a fuck alternative comedy uh, bridge between the two of them yeah. like the only person to play Andy Kaufman was Jim Carrey basically that's the only person that could have played him Yeah, he was the right man and anyway like I said he, he assumed the role He's in character the, all the, the time. The whole process of yeah. making the movie. Didn't and he? Andy Kaufman had s uh, several alter egos. One of them, I oh, forget the name. Tony of the guy. Clifton. Tony Clifton, who was very loud, brash, obnoxious uh, stand-up comedian from the Bronx, and he had this really. Yeah, what's that? That's, huh? the, that's it. Well, yeah. So, well, 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 so yeah. Jim Carrey dresses up as these characters. He assumes those roles as well. Yeah. And he was drunk a lot of the time, and people like Danny DeVito, Paul Giamatti, you would get looks from them. They were being caught on camera and just basically rolling their eyes, like, what the fuck is this guy doing? What you the know? fuck is going on? And the director, who said he'd never been scared of anybody in his life, was scared of Jim Carrey because. Of Tony Clifton. Of Tony as Clifton, well, yeah. 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 Um, and I, I think you made a really good point the other day when you said it was almost as if that should have been the thing Jim that, Carrey that was released. said that right? Jim Carrey said that that's right the movie should have been a, a hybrid of a documentary about and, Jim playing him yeah. and the movie itself yeah. and you made the point that that is probably one of the most egotistical things you could say because I just turn your mic a little bit mate it's just turn oh, a little yeah. bit away from you there you go um, because there you it's go. not about Jim Carrey no. And the documentary is all about Jim Carrey. Yes, he's playing Andy Kaufman and there's, you know, references to Andy Kaufman and his parents are there on set. But ultimately, it's like a vanity project for Jim Carrey. Yeah. It's at the expense of everyone else, I think. It feels that way. That's what it felt like to me. And um, and I think that's clear in everyone else's reactions. Because at first, they were all like, you saw Danny DeVito sort of hugging him as if to say, you're so right for this you're the one you're going to carry us to the promised land with this Andy Kaufman uh, performance and then later you can see people just getting really tired of it and I I, I don't want to ruin it but the, there is a character in it who is, is a wrestler and he mm. he did a bit he actually did a bit with Jerry, Andy Kaufman Jerry Lawler Lawler yeah Jerry the King Lawler yeah, yeah. and uh he did a bit with Andy Kaufman, and then he, the and original, then he's in the he's in the movie as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, with Jim Carrey. With Jim Carrey. Now he had a good point when he said, "Well, Andy Kaufman was really nice to me. Like when the cameras were turned off, he was like Mr. Lawler, this Mr. Lawler, that. He was very he was well respectful. mannered, respectful, and he felt that Jim Carrey wasn't being very respectful. He was out and out 
antagonistic. The cat, it, it was like Jim Carrey never turned into Andy Kaufman in Public Solitude. Do you yeah, know what I mean? He was always performing. He was always being watched, and I think there must have been moments where Andy Kaufman wasn't being watched. Mm. I don't remember the film very well, but I don't think the documentary picked up on that part. Because no. if if I was to if I have not watched the movie and I watched that documentary, I would think that all of it was an was a was like an act. And you'd also come across as quite irritating. Yeah, exactly. Andy Kaufman, which he wasn't. He was a really gentle know. soul. His character might have been, but his actual personality. He was. Del- I mean, it was. He seemed to irritate a lot of people and cause problems for a lot of people. And I don't know if I think Andy Kaufman. It's a fine line because. Although, so he's calling Jerry Lawler out and wanted a wrestling match with him. Yeah. And then yeah. Jerry Lawler, like, body slams him and yeah. uh, Andy Kaufman has his neck in a brace, yeah. which he doesn't need. And, like, three months later, he's still got this neck brace on yeah. and goes on the David Letterman show and, uh, you know, he's calling Jerry Lawler out. And it's so very much it's and, very yeah. much like Andy Kaufman knows that this guy could kick his ass, yeah. but he's just going to prod him just a little bit, yeah. you know, and he's just pushing the envelope every time, just a tiny bit. Whereas Jim Carrey was just... I don't think there was any subtlety there. It was just Jim Carrey being a bit self-indulgent and just going, do you know what? Fuck it. Just fuck everything. Yeah. And I don't think that's the right way to approach something like that because this is I'm somebody's sure life either. and... Um, I didn't like how there's a uh, lot of stuff to do with the family as well you know yeah. he's actually, Andy Kaufman's actual family and they were interacting with Jim Carrey as if he was Andy Kaufman and I mean plaudits to it right I mean what did I say the other day I have a problem with people showing me their preparation mm-hmm. um, I always say to my students like leave don't tell me about what you've been doing to prepare like come in and do it I don't want to see Yoshi Aida, uh, you know, a Japanese practitioner, talks about the invisible actor. Mm-hmm. All this work you do in the training, uh, like we do at the NTL or I do with any of my students, it's all training, it's all preparation. And, and that's sacred in a way. You should leave that where it is. You shouldn't go and tell people about all that stuff. And then it becomes about your ego. Then it becomes about your ego, you're right. And um, I think a lot of actors do that now. And I don't know. I feel. I feel like it's a was a big. It was interesting to watch, but I feel like it was a big ego trip. Mm. Like Daniel Day Lewis, I do. I think I've said this before on the podcast that there's always a story that accompanies Daniel Day Lewis's performances. And interestingly enough, there's nothing that's accompanying the Phantom Thread, which is about to come out. There's been no story on his new. Paul oh, Thomas he did Anderson this. Collaboration. Yeah. Or he's doing this. I, I mean, there's a story that he's quit acting to become a. Uh, fashion designer uh-huh. but that's neither here nor there that's a, that's after the fact Yeah, there's nothing come out about his preparation for Crucible you know we heard oh he built his house do you know what I mean he built his house with his bare hands like he built his house that he lived in and that's um, Daniel Day-Lewis's tr- trade He that is him Daniel Day-Lewis is that kind of actor and Jim Carrey nothing, doesn't do that but the uh, thing uh, is right w- w- let, me, let me finish yeah, it because I on. think that's a good point as well but I think that's not Daniel Day-Lewis's fault that that's no. getting out that's his we're not saying don't prepare you know but mm. what we're saying is to to, to people that are um, uh, uh, what's the word um What's the word? They're sort of um, lucky enough, I guess, to, for lack of a better word, lucky yeah. enough to be there to watch him prepare, yeah. to keep your fucking mouth shut, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I, I guess like my left foot, he never left his wheelchair and stuff like that, or uh, Gangs of New York. Um, th- there's a myth, I guess there's a myth he that he never... self-hypothermia. Hypothermia because he wouldn't wear proper clothes. But actually I heard a story the other day with a guy who uh, was the, I think he was the right, maybe the writer for Gangs of New York and he had he had meetings with Daniel Day Lewis on the on the on the weekends between shooting mm. where he was Daniel Day Lewis he wasn't Bill mm-hmm. when he was on set he was Bill yeah yeah but he didn't it wasn't like he didn't break character Lincoln like he never dropped character apparently mm-hmm. people said they had to address him as as Abraham Lincoln like these stories don't help because I go in and I see that and I think that influences me I think you you can learn to just <clears throat> if someone is consistently that dedicated then you take it as that's the that's their that's the fabric of their work that's how they work and it is yeah that is their principle as an actor 
So every yeah, of course there are going to be you know urban legends about what Daniel Day Lewis did that he broke his you know broke his rib because he was in character so much as um, what's the Christy, man, Brown. Christy Brown and all that kind of stuff. You can forgive it because on screen you don't really see that ego. The difference I think between Daniel Day Lewis and Jim Carrey is that Daniel Day Lewis wouldn't dream of releasing or signing off on a documentary which reveals his whole process yeah. because that is um, sacred. Yeah, it is. I think and sacred is it is sacred. We don't like to get like too... No, without getting not, too wanky. But it's not wanky. I mean, it is a bit wanky. Yeah. But it's not religious, I guess. I was trying to say. It's not sort no. of religious. Like, But it is sacred. It is. Mm-hmm. Don't give that shit away. And I yeah. think Jim Carrey's, in, in a way, is sort of... You think he's at a very weird place at the moment as well. You can see it in his eyes. Yeah. He's, he is in a very weird place. He's kind of gone... He's gone somewhere else. I mean, each to their own, I don't know. But I think it's an interesting conversation to have about preparation and about um, how far do you take it. Because I, I always think if... Um, I would always be respectful to someone's process. But if someone, if he was doing that around me, I would yeah. think he's a fucking dick. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, and I'd want to tell him. Because if it affected me as a person, and my if it affected my preparation, I don't think he ever stopped to think about how what he was doing might affect all of the other people on set's preparation. Because mm-hmm. in a sense, the director, he, was, he was fucking everybody off. He wasn't helping anybody. No. He was just thinking about himself. The director really had to ob- beg overcome, him. beg him or <laughs> overcome real obstacles to try and get a, a, a collaboration, yeah. you know? Because it, it, no matter what, everything is a collaboration. It's not, it's not your, it's not, it wasn't Jim Carrey's piece, mm-hmm. yeah? And let's be fair as well. There are plenty of other actors out there between, you know, everywhere between Daniel Day-Lewis and Jim Carrey. There are, you know, thousands and thousands of other egotistical actors that insist upon, you know, giving themselves over to the craft and immersing themselves in character where you could probably pick a few out and go, nah, this is a bit about your ego though, a little bit maybe. Mm. That flexing your muscles a little bit. Yeah. How helpful is this to everybody apart How from yourself? How helpful can you be? Do you know what? You're just being really unhelpful. We've, uh, I think we're drawing to a close, mate. At what time are we on? We're about an hour and 15 in here. Fucking hell, this is a big one, isn't it? Listen, Cracking we, on. I wanna, we gotta, we'll finish off Go with on, uh, uh, Adam Ridgway has tweeted us. Look, if you want to tweet us, at TwitBlackHan, follow us on Twitter. If you want to message us, yeah. you can do that on Twitter. But also, if you go on blackhandproductions.tumblr.com, yeah. you can ask us anything on there. You can write us a letter. You can look at all our <laughs> short films. Write us a letter. Write us a lovely letter. Get in touch. Um, yeah, so Ridgeway's tweeted us recently. As he said. If you could sum up your sex life with a movie title, what would it be? The Good, The Bad, The Ugly. Yeah, thought that one was going to come up. Yeah. I think we've had that one for uh, Name Your Farts with a movie title. Good I think that was a thing ugly. we did a while oh, ago, wasn't did, it? Yeah. Go on then, what's yours? Um, so we've got... so um, Some of these are pretty questionable. Uh, misery. <laughs> the Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> Die Hard. Die Hard, oh yeah. Batteries Not Included. Die Harder. Is a better one. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Oh. <laughs> Nightcrawler. Night. Ooh. Yeah, they're pretty dark. That's dark. It yeah. follows. Some. Yeah. Yeah. Something um, will follow. They're gonna get worse now. All there right. will. There will be blood. Oh no. Sorry. Um, oh. Step Brothers. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, my personal favourite: Twelve Angry Men. Mm. Oh. So I would pick. Uh, Never ending story would be mine. Just because it's a good movie. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. And gravity. Gravity. <laughs> Alright, so you guys have been lovely. Subscribe. Go to podomatic.com. You can subscribe on there. Also, you can subscribe on iTunes. Share it with your mates. Get in touch and we'll see you next month. Same time, same place. Bye. Bye.